different than many of the other subjects that are being discussed, um, but no less important, especially since in the Peace Corps we're living in a strongly oral culture and a storytelling culture, and our institutional memory is being passed on through those stories. Um, so these films serve a very important purpose in maintaining our institutional memory. Um, and I want to welcome to our panel, we have Alan Toth, the director producer of Posh Corps, which uh, any of you who were at the plenary session this morning saw the trailer. Yeah. And we have Cassandra Herman, okay. right here, producer director of Framed, a fabulous documentary about um, the way the nonprofit world is treating Africa. Did I sum that up? Somewhat yeah. accurately. Um, just both films fantastic, and you have to see them. And then I am producer director of A Towering Task, which is a documentary in development, which is a big picture documentary about the force, uh, the Peace Corps, um, past, present, and future. And so um, we have a few sections to go through, but I wanted to get a little bit of a feel for our audience here. Um, how many of you are here because they have because you have their own your own idea for a project or you want to figure out a way to tell your story? I deliberately gave my documentary a provocative title because I knew it would upset people. Um, and I looked at Cassandra's film or the the trailer for her film, and I was like, this is going to be such a difficult thing to pull off. And you know, and she just I respect her just incredibly because she's willing to go after this topic because as you mentioned. It's so, it's such a difficult thing to do. Um, but I, I was going to ask Alana, what, what specific problems have you run into in trying to do a Peace Corps, volu a Peace Corps documentary about the agency? I mean, how, how have they responded to that? The agency itself? Yeah. <laughs> well, I love Peace Corps dearly, uh, but they're not the most free and open with their information. Um, and they were, I, I, I would imagine that Peace Corps themselves would be the first to admit that. <laughs> right, Stacy. <laughs> um, it's difficult. Peace Corps, in my mind, has hung its hat on the 60s. Glorious beginnings, amazing, charismatic leaders involved, and the Camelot era to attach yourself to. Um, and then we are missing the rest of the story. And then we have murders, or rapes, or bad things happen without the context of a story. And so then Peace Corps gets really defensive because suddenly the people that are knocking on the press officer's door are the people that are writing about how Peace Corps' system breaks down because people are being murdered or um, um, you know, these volunteers are being yanked out of countries because of natural disasters and whatnot. And they don't have the context. And so I, I think that's one of the reasons why doing a documentary big picture documentary is so important for us because we need to provide the general public with a baseline so that when it bleeds and leads, it doesn't come out of, we, don't, we know nothing about the Peace Corps except for JFK and a murder. Well, uh, I think one of the things you need to do is uh, is get some numbers of results. Like this morning, uh, the congressman was saying that only cost uh, Public on what is Africa and how the great diversity in uh, East, West, Central, uh, Southern, and North Africa, um, and how to um, how to demonstrate that uh, heterogeneity uh, rather than um, having America think of Africa as a country. So how do you how, how is the film going to capture that? Well, it's a great question to a huge challenge. And I think we, I mean, we actually, in the film, we're, folk, we're mostly in Kenya. Um, and I think there's just no way to do that. Um, and I think there's often, someone used to say this about, it was a soprano, is that you can't, it's, it's, you're immersed in the experience, and then if you want to find out all these details and facts about the mob or whatever it is, you go online to do that, or sort of. So I think for us, it's, we're never going to be able to do that. It would be impossible. Um, and I think, so we, the, the people that we ended up filming with, the two of them there were in Kenya. There's a woman who was born in South Africa but is a teacher at Boston College, and she's in the film. Um, and I think Kenya is a really interesting place, anyhow, just because of with development and aid, so that works. But I think we're really trying to have people connect to the personal experiences of, these, of, of the, the people in the film. And through that, I think 
um, get a deep understanding of what it's been like for, for them. Um, one of them kind of came of age during sort of the era of humanitarianism, like post-colonial Kenya, um, the We Are the World kind of era. He was a teenager then. Um, and then Boniface is much younger, so he's sort of this next generation of change makers. And I think that's what he's going to be in his country. I think he's going to go into politics. So it's more through their experiences, and I think we're also trying to show things that you know you don't normally see. I mean, it's, it's like Nairobi, kind of images of Nairobi, which is sort of you know a modern, bustling kind of city. Um, at home, kind of images of their families, photos from their past, you know, things that just I think portrayals of Africans in a, in a way that's a bit different. And then I think people just, and music will try to do it in all these various ways that we can. But other than that, I think hopefully you get the essence of the idea that Africa is not a country. Um, I think that's what they're all kind of saying in their own way. <laughs> and then you would go online or wherever it is and, and want to see more or understand that more. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, I, I, I know we're not going to talk about all the tourism, but I just wanted to make a comment, which is I, I think the critical gaze to look at the volunteer projects and, and have awareness is really good. And at the same time, it all depends on our reference point. I mean, is it better for a young person to spend their vacation in Las Vegas or to maybe go work in an orphanage in Ghana and live out the country and make friends? I mean, it, it can still be a good thing. Oh, yeah. Well, I think it could definitely still be a good thing. I think, I think, it's, I think Alana said it perfectly. It's not, we're not trying to, to there's, there's not a right or wrong. It's we're trying to just sort of, yeah. Yeah, and I not think that's cool. Exactly. Yeah. Perfectly. Exactly. That's. <laughs> I think that's that's what I find so interesting about this panel is that there are two filmmakers here who just have very provocative stories in different ways. Like, you know, I knew that Cassandra's was going to be incredibly provocative to this audience, but I would imagine that Alana has been has been pretty provocative too. And this is kind of a difficult question, but um, have you run into people who have a lot invested in the opposing viewpoint and don't want to see your film made? Um, do you want to? run into anybody who doesn't want the big picture Peace Corps story out there. Um, you know, I think what I've run into is that there are several critical voices of the Peace Corps, mm -hmm. and I think the Peace Corps needs critical voices, and it's a good thing that we have those voices. And when I start talking to those people, no matter how hardened they may feel against the Peace Corps because they feel wrong and they feel frustrated, and they probably have a lot of justifiable points. When we start talking about the Peace Corps fading and there being a real possibility of the Peace Corps going away, that's where the most critical voices say, no, no, not that. We want to be able to criticize. We want to be able to discuss. We want to raise the level of awareness about Peace Corps warts and all, because that's what makes it interesting. Um, so, I, I think that's why it's so important to have an objective documentary to hear all those voices and then be able to move the Peace Corps forward and address that question of what should Peace Corps be for the next century, given that those guys don't know it still exists. Cassandra, you've had a little bit of resistance from volunteerism companies or something, right? Oh, no, that was a Canadian. Okay. That was a different organization. They, Pippa Biddle was interviewed for a, a Canadian um, production documentary, and then a very uh, Free the Children, which is an organization based there, had the footage pulled like a couple days before, or managed to have it pulled. How does that, I mean, doesn't that concern you that there is sort of this movie coming out about questioning whether or not volunteerism is effective, and yet people with enough money are able to stop them from showing it or get them to change it? Does that concern you with your own film? Um, it does, I mean, they actually did a cease and desist for us during the Kickstarter. No way. Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, and it was our, you know, there's the, the principle of fair use in documentary, so we didn't, because I just thought it was, a, a, you don't usually secure rights before a Kickstarter trailer because you, no filmmaker can afford to do that, so we, sh we didn't do the best fair use, and I didn't think it would really be an issue, and it, we got on Upworthy, I didn't even understand what Upworthy was at the time, completely, but I think that's what happened, and someone from Free the Children saw it, and they, they contacted Upworthy and had it pulled, and then they contacted Kickstarter and had it pulled off, 
um, and they sent us, they FedExed us some very serious legal papers. Um, and they tried to get us to sign that we would never use any material about them in a future film, which I didn't. I just had a lawyer look over it. Um, but I, no, because I think if we do, I would love to actually include material about them because I, um, I can't, I think it's incredible that they have this film, this Canadian film pulled. And Pippa Biddle, who's in this film, she does, she has a blog. She's blogged quite a lot about it. And she's put clips of the footage that they removed because um, she was so upset about that happening. So, yeah. So now I have a question for Alan because Alan is doing amazing things for the filmmakers in the Peace Corps community. And, um, Alan is building up from nothing um, a, a Peace Corps archival anthology, um, and I would love to, for him to explain a little bit more about what Posh Corps is doing, because one of the big things about documentaries is they can't stop when the credits roll. They're supposed to start the discussion. They're supposed to spark the, the wheels turning, and I'm getting my metaphors mixed up here. Um, Alan is doing it, so tell us a little bit. Um, yeah, so we talk a lot about how you make a film, and then how do you raise money, and all that's very difficult, but then, especially now, um, that doesn't, that's not the end of it. In fact, it's probably going to be even longer once you get to distribution. Um, and I think most of the standard distribution paths, such as going to festivals, and hopefully getting maybe a short theatrical run, those are sort of closing. Um, and now there's a lot more responsibility on filmmakers to sell their own work. So I'm starting sort of a cooperative between Peace Corps filmmakers to sort of get us enough power in terms of uh, web traffic um, that we can compete with groups like NPCA so that, you know, at this point I kind of feel like Peace Corps associations are sort of functioning as a gatekeeper for third goal projects. So I kind of want to just kind of go around so that we can just reach prospective volunteers without having to, you know, kind of go through this approval process through, through associations. Probably not a popular opinion, but I think it. I think it's something we have to do if we're going to get them out there. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping to bring on as many filmmakers as possible so that we can get enough traffic to sort of be a major competitor in the in the Peace Corps community. So the national security staff are permanent, and police work you can never have people who do undercover work permanently because it leads to corruption. So. I would then suggest to you, rather than doing actual history, which is going to bring up all these terrible things that have happened in the Peace Corps, <laughs> and would, in my mind, suggest why do we have such a few numbers? I mean, what person wants to go in when they find out that they're being, you know, a tool of the national security strategy for Iran or for Russia or for whatever? So, so the, the, the point I would suggest to you is pick out 12 home runs. Now, somebody's uh, diminished. Well, you know, what's this president who got taught by a Peace Corps volunteer? Did, did that really have an impact on him? Well, I think you have to go and do these kind of contextual deep studies. You have the president of Peru, who was a Peace Corps uh, store. There's all kinds of Africa stories I've heard. So make 12 great stories that cover the 50 years of actual third world people who say, if it hadn't been for the Peace Corps, X wouldn't have happened. Don't get into counting the cows on the students, because that's a con game. Because that's not really change. That's just numbers. So I mean, let me just give you an example. When I was there, we worked at the village to empower the parents to fight the government agency to give them things that the government wouldn't do. Johnson comes in, and what do we have? We go to the agency, and the same agency that wouldn't give anything in the first place. So that changes the results. And so I would rather see you focus on the big hits and forget the little crummy things. Because how are you going to argue with the national security state? They'll just shut you down. They'll just screw you up. They'll crash your brain. Whatever. And, and if you think that's funny, the fact is, none of the security staff on Peace Corps get that they can go forever. They're, they're not on a two-year, three-year rotation. I think what we need is a camera on you. Uh, those are really good topics. And I think, you know, there are some really interesting topics in our history and in general in our philosophy and in our future. Um, risk 
is one of those. Um, when I, uh, you know, as you saw in the, in the trailer or in my preview, uh, Bill Josephs the founding general counsel of the Peace Corps, the quote that I found so salient that he said was, what is needed is leadership that is inspired and risk adverse. And I think it's been a long time since we've been risk adverse. As a society, as Peace Corps, we live in a culture of fear and if we think that we can insulate ourselves from any kind of risk or danger, um, then we will never do anything like the Peace Corps. Can I one thing? I went to the 2011 thing, and I went to the Peru <coughs> thing, and you know, there was Frank Mankiewicz, the guy who said, well, we're down there to cause revolution. That's what he told us in 64. But here we were in 2011, and this guy, I don't want to pick on bald-headed guy, but this guy was the country director, and he said, we're in contact every day, everybody must check in every morning on their iPad, but I said, I wouldn't know if I had to do that. Because one of the great magic things was we were out there creating leadership. We were becoming either leaders or doves. But you know what? Um, Peace Corps has become more risk adverse, but at the same time, I've interviewed volunteers that came back in 2012 and 2014. And there's something there that is a baseline that doesn't change, whether, whether you have an iPhone or you have a laptop with you or you haven't been home in two years. There, there is a connection that's made. Um, and it's changed a lot, and I think, I think we run the danger of, the, 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 the pre-internet generation of Peace Corps volunteers runs the danger of dismissing everything that came after the internet. Um, and I, I think that's, that's a bad way to go, because there's a lot to be had still in the Peace Corps. Uh, yeah, one more question, I think we're out of time. Oh, real fast. How much of your 